Sometimes things happen in WWE and it's nobody's fault. Like when you take a step back and think about it, even with three hours worth of content, when it comes to Monday Night Raw, you do have a very large roster. You've got to try and balance and that has to be hard. You can't get everybody onto the card all the time. And that means, yeah, every now and then you've got to sacrifice somebody else in order to get the person you're pushing over. And that goes for wins and losses too. If Drew McIntyre needs to kick Dean Ambrose's ass, because Drew McIntyre is the project right now, then Drew McIntyre has to go out there and kick Dean Ambrose's ass. You can then come back to Dean later when he needs some love, although that doesn't really work for Ambrose in this scenario, because apparently he's going to leave, but you'd take my point. On other occasions though, I cannot fathom how certain situations come to be, and the only thing I can ever come up with is that said wrestler must have really pissed somebody off, and if they have, I would rather know. Otherwise, I do stand here like I'm doing now, just questioning what the deal is. What did this person do to get kicked in the crotch as hard as they have? There are a few superstars that fit into this category of what the hell is going on? And that's why I think WWE should apologize to them, if nothing else, because it would make them feel better. Why? Here's why. So we do have to go through a few names, but let's start with one of the most obvious, and that would indeed be Kevin Owens. Now I love Kevin Owens as much as a wrestling fan can love a wrestler, especially because he's quite inspirational. He never fit the WWE mold, and yet he fit into the company seamlessly, and he always feels really unique. He can do things that nobody expects, and if you ever put a microphone in his hand, it is pure fire. And also for my money, I've never seen him have a bad match. Now I know that Vince McMahon doesn't agree with that, because we've all seen the reaction to Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho from WrestleMania. And I would say that Vince can probably be called, well, he was wrong. I think he was wrong. This is why I'm absolutely perplexed as to what has happened as of late. Now, there were a few rumors floating around that a couple of things may happen when Kevin Owens was ready to return. Either he was going to come back at WrestleMania 35 and take on Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship and maybe even win it, or he'd make a big splash the following night on Raw slash SmackDown. What I wasn't ready for was secret option number three. Have a rushed return on a random Tuesday night, usurp Kofi Kingston's attempt at trying to win one of the big belts all the while trying to tell us, but don't worry about that because I am in fact a good guy now. Well, if that is true, you ain't acting like a good guy, Kevin Owens, so something has gone very wrong. And yeah, at Fastlane, where he did get his championship opportunity, he didn't technically lose because Ali was also in that contest, and he took the fall. But let me ask you this. What has Kevin Owens done since? He hosts a couple of Kevin Owens shows, and that is about it. And when it does come to WrestleMania 35, I don't think he's doing anything. And if you're watching this poster show, I bet he didn't do anything. Unless, of course, oh my gosh, he was putting the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. If that's what's happened to him, I may go somewhere, get a big saw, and take my brain off and throw it into a bin, because if you ain't got a brain, you can't remember anything. I mean, on a recent episode of SmackDown, he was one of the guys running out to celebrate with Kofi Kingston. That is not what KO should be doing, especially not when he's only just come back. So why did we do this all so quickly if there was no plan? Especially because this was coming back from an injury. Now, it always sucks when a wrestler gets hurt in the ring and has to go away for a while. But every fan on the planet can understand, well, nobody wants to be hurt. So when you do come back, you've already got stock with the crowd and you can use that sometimes for a couple of months. What we did with Kevin Owens didn't even last four weeks. From the time he was back on TV until that celebration with Kofi Kingston I just mentioned, it wasn't even a month. The whole thing just dies a death when you just treat them like they're part of the status quo, and that happened in record time here, and also absolutely squandered the babyface turn that a lot of people, like me, believe Kevin Owens deserved a shot at, because you didn't give it any room to breathe. I am exaggerating a little here, and WWE can always ramp up any wrestler within a few weeks, but it is a mystery like evolution, and that's why I think Kevin Owens deserves an apology. If he's not going to get one from anybody else, I will do it. So Kevin Owens, KO, Mr. Owens, Big Kev. No, that's somebody else. But Kev, if you are listening to this, I am sorry. There's other guys we can throw into the mix as well, so let's move on to number two, and that would be EC3, because who in the hell did he piss off? The last time I saw him, he was either laughing on Raw at the Saturday Night Live skit, as far as I'm concerned, that's the first time he's even been allowed to talk or he was getting his ass kicked on SmackDown 
in an impromptu battle royal, which wasn't even a battle royal, a bunch of people just started having a fight and he got beaten up by Jeff Hardy and Asuka. Before all of that, he was just preening in front of a mirror or flirting with Alexa Bliss, and all of that came after weeks, if not months, of vignettes telling us that he was going to be a big deal. Why on earth didn't we just keep him down in NXT if all we had for him when he came up was to be a 2019 narcissist. It didn't work for Lex Luger and it ain't gonna work now. When we are talking about WrestleMania 35, he is just gonna be in the armbar. And I don't think anybody believes he can actually win that, especially when you've got dudes like Braun Strowman in there. So unless there's a serious reason that I don't know about, it just feels like an absolute waste. Even if you didn't want to put him in the main event, he is a solid mid-carder. He could pack out that mid-card just fine. So EC3, also known as Ethan Carter III. If you ever see this, I apologize to you as well. And by that same token as well, let's extend an olive branch to Sanity because they finally arrived back on SmackDown after months of being away and were told their plans for the evening were all three of them we're gonna lose to The Miz. Now, nothing against The Miz. I like The Miz's babyface turn, but come on. I mean, what other group would WWE feel comfortable doing that with other than maybe The Ascension? And I tell you, The Ascension turn up on TV more than Sanity does. I don't understand where they go. One week they're there, then we'll have proper months, like sometimes two months, where they don't do anything. Then they're Shane McMahon's henchmen, and then again, they're being beaten by The Miz. Every one of them, every one. Stone Cold Steve Austin, this is not. I'm not saying they should be treated like Stone Cold Steve Austin, but I am saying it's absolutely bonkers. Another casualty of this craziness, and maybe somebody who can actually feel even more hard done by, is Mojo Rawley. As far as I can tell, every time Mojo has been given something to do, He's absolutely smashed it like he was pretty good when he won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal a few years ago at WrestleMania when they teamed him with Zack Ryder. He did well there too. And all those occasions where he was yelling at himself in the mirror, they could have been awful, but I actually thought Rawley made it work for himself. Mojo just seems to have a knack to throw himself into anything with all the gutso he's got. And so usually on the other side, if he was given the opportunity, he'd still be floating above water. So somebody please come and tell me what happens week in, week out, when sometimes he is there yelling at himself and sometimes he's not. Is it a case of raw cameramen just running around arenas all over the country trying to find him and then giving up because like, well, I guess we can't find the right room. Hopefully we can do it again in seven days. Like if the first episode of Raw you had seen had this man just going crazy himself at his own reflection and then you tuned in again the following week and he wasn't there, what would you be thinking to yourself? How could you explain it? What was this meant to be? You need some kind of payoff, even if it's Mojo turning to the camera and going, ha, only joking. At least then you've got closure. So Mojo Rawling, I'm sorry. Lastly, I think Finn Balor could do with an apology because while I am pleased that the demon is finally gonna make its debut at WrestleMania, I kind of do think it was a little bit rushed. I think we could have built this up to be a much bigger deal than it's going to be. There was plenty of chances to send it through the roof and get the wrestling community talking as opposed to kind of pitching it like some guy who likes to dress up and put paint on his face. And that's about as far as it went. Imagine he actually does lose or has lost already to Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania 35. So many people have been saying, why isn't the demon at every single WrestleMania? It would make perfect sense. You can give him the big elaborate entrance. He can feel like, well, just like this mammoth, this thing you've never seen before. And opponents can be genuinely scared of him. And I should be able to stand here and say, there's no way Finn Balor were gonna lose. When you go back in time and remember what happened with Brock Lesnar round one and what happened with Brock Lesnar round two, don't forget Lesnar just kicked his ass afterwards. So much so, I thought like an idiot, they were actually going to have a rematch, which they never did. And you can never account for anything, which is why, unless, you know, compared to some other people on this list, I'm sure Mojo Rawley, for example, would jump at the chance to switch paces with Finn Balor. But I still want to put it out there. Finn Balor, I'm sorry. I'll give an honourable mention to Oscar as well, because it was really sad that she lost her championship so close to the show of shows. So sorry to Oscar as well. But it's kind of hard to argue that one, because while WWE could have done more with her, she did win the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. That was pretty cool. She did have that amazing match with Charlotte at WrestleMania 34. She was able to attack Becky Lynch out at the Royal Rumble, and she won the match at the TLC pay-per-view. It's not as bad as it first seems, even though, yes, it could be better. So we mention her, and our feelings go out to her, but in this instance, she doesn't get a sorry. But only because you're doing well, Oscar. I want you to do well. You're great. You're one of the best people they have. So they say that sorry is the hardest word, and if nobody else was going to say it, I'm happy to Elton John my way up over this and make sure 
it gets done. And it's a big one, it's a major one to Kevin Owens. I had a friend text me today and go, oh, Miller, I've just heard that Kevin Owens is back in the promotion. He only watches it from time to time. I love Kevin Owens. Please tell me what he's gonna do come April the 7th. And I had to say, dude, I don't even know. He replied, is he gonna be in that battle royal? That will do. And I replied, dude, I don't know. Maybe he's just gonna host an edition of the Kevin Owens show. And he is good at that. Again, promo fire. We don't know what he's doing. Why did we bring him back? He could have been coming back on Raw. He would have got a huge evasion. Sami Zayn could have come back on SmackDown. It would have been wonderful. It would have been perfect. And instead you crushed all my dreams, WWE. And now I'm standing here having to apologize on your behalf. Do you know what that does to me inside? Actually, I'm all right with it because I believe in it. But still, I hope you understand. And I hope you respect that I've gone out on a limb here. And then we do it again. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know who else on the WW roster we should be saying sorry to. Like, share, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com. Read yourself some articles. Go and follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE. And then here on YouTube, go and watch more of What Culture videos. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you very much for watching. And look, here's hoping. All the names that I've mentioned, there's always a chance. We mentioned Drew McIntyre at the start of the video. He was nowhere like December time and now in the WrestleMania seasons he's having a match against Roman Reigns and he feels like such a threat there are fans out there saying you can't have Drew McIntyre lose that would be nuts so EC3, Mojo, Rawley, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Sanity you never notice that they fit a certain pigeonhole or WWE needs them to do something it absolutely could happen but as I stand here today it hasn't and it hasn't happened to such a degree like I say and I thought to myself we got to say sorry. We've got to go out there and we've got to apologize. And I'm proud of myself for doing it. And if you know you've wronged someone, I mean, I didn't wrong anyone. But you take my point. If you know you've wronged someone, why don't you give them a call? Why don't you send them a text, a WhatsApp, an email and apologize as well? I promise you'll feel better afterwards. Be the bigger person and let's light up this world with positivity. See you soon.